everyone, it's Winnie from Asian Boss. The world is still reeling from the shocking riot incident on the U.S. Capitol Hill. And in our previous video, we interviewed a group of American expats living in Korea and their answers were quite insightful. Please take a look at the video if you haven't already. This time, we spoke with a group of American expats living in Tokyo to get their answers around the shocking incident. Will their answers be different from their Korean correspondents? Before we get into it, make sure that you subscribe to Asian Boss and click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. Now, let's hear what they gotta say. Just to start off, can you give us a little bit background of yourself? So where, where did you come from and how long have you been in Japan? Sure, my name is Zachary Elgamil. I'm originally from Florida. I've been living in Florida most of my life. Uh, I came to Japan about three years ago. I am originally from Maryland, USA, and I have been in Japan since 2017. So this is my fourth year, fourth year here in Japan, yeah. Um, so I'm from Rochester, New York, originally, upstate New York. And I came to Japan in 2005. Oh. So I've been here for quite some time. I'm from the United States, Chicago originally, but I uh, lived in Atlanta, Georgia most of my life. I've been in Japan for a year and maybe six months or seven months or so. So I'm from Mississippi in the United States, the southern United States. My husband and I have been in Japan for about a year now. Um, we came for his job. He works for the United States government. What kind of brought you to Japan? Did it meet your expectation of, you know, what, what you had for Japan? Uh, yeah, I think so. I came here just for vacation in 2019 in May. And then I made a pretty rash decision to just move here while I'm young and don't have many responsibilities <laughs> to try living abroad. I'll see what happens. It's been fun. Uh, I came to Japan because I wanted to speak Japanese and study Japanese. So I originally came on the JET program, the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program. And uh, then it just sort of ballooned from there. And I just wanted to keep studying and keep working in Japan. Knowing that it was going to be really different from America, that was my expectation. It was like, this is going to be absolutely not like living in the US. And that's absolutely what it was. I mean, originally, I always kind of had a fascination with Japanese culture. I mean, I think I can relate to a lot of kids my age. We grew up on Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. So I always planned a trip to come out here. And when I was an adult, I ended up having a vacation, coming out to Japan for about two weeks, but decided it wasn't enough. So I came back and then I never left since then. So you've been here for a couple years. Are you? How often do you keep track of what's going on back in your home country? Or do you actually stay plugged in? I stay pretty plugged in uh, between, I mean, I still have quite a few friends back home that I talk to and between like social media and I also have like uh, American news pop up on my phone every morning. So between that, yeah, I stay pretty abreast of like what's going on. I keep up with it pretty well because Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. So I would say I'm pretty plugged in. So I guess you're also aware of what happened at the U.S. Capitol. Absolutely. It was Wednesday morning, you know, I went to bed the night before, just so happy, right? Georgia, we got it. Two more senators in the bucket. Woof. Dodged a bullet. Went to sleep, woke up the next morning and was like, wait, what happened? And I had so much work to do that day and I was just bent over my phone checking Twitter, you know, obsessively trying to keep up with the news. Like, was this a big thing, like, within the U.S. expat community in Tokyo or...? Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like a lot of us kind of canceled our plans that we had planned for, like, Wednesday morning to just sort of, like, park in front of the TV and the internet and just kind of watch it unfold. And I know I was texting, like, several friends we were all texting back and forth, you know, have you seen it? Like, wake up, look at the news. So it definitely, I feel like it's a hot topic right now. When I meet other Americans, we rarely discuss politics because I think it's one of those things where, you know, neither side is going to budge. So if you guys have opposing views, then mm -hmm. it might end up in a kind of conflicted conversation, right? So I think maybe Americans choose to consciously not discuss politics because it's so divisive these days. What was your initial reaction when you saw the pictures, the videos, and why Why do you feel so? I was like, how did this happen? <laughs> so was it more like confusion or like... I was anger? like, how did this happen? I was confused and so I started, you know, reading more to see what happened. What? what, what? I th at first I thought it was like made up. I thought it was like, you know, like... A, <laughs> fake news. Yeah, fake news, basically. And so I started reading more and I was like, whoa, this actually happened. I woke up that morning and I was reading all the chats for my friends. I was super shocked. 
Like, obviously, I, I mean, I knew that there was a protest going to happen, and I feel that, the, and I believe strongly believe that people have the right to protest, even how no matter how, how deluded they are, as long as they're keeping peaceful. But I had never imagined that. I mean, literally, rioters would be breaking into the Capitol buildings and like intimidating lawmakers and trying to interfere with electoral process. I had never imagined waking up to that. I'm not surprised because I feel like, especially with online rhetoric and things like that, with the increase of QAnon, with the comments I see on like Trump's Twitter before he was banned and things like that, um, people have been threatening this pretty much since the election began. Um, pretty much, honestly, since he's been in office. You know, when, when Trump got elected and it was like, oh, we're, we're taking America back now. Taking it back from who? You know, and it's a certain group of people who have been saying that. I thought that just doesn't look like the U.S. even. It looks like another, I mean, just looked like something you would see on the news at home of another country, like a war-torn country. I couldn't believe we were seeing that. So it was sad, but not surprising. As an American living in Japan, what does this incident make you feel as an American? You know, I mean, it's embarrassing probably more than anything else because we do, you know, we'll have Japanese friends and not just Japanese friends. I mean, friends from the UK or Australia. And it's just, it's a joke. I mean, not, not, it's not a joke. They take it seriously, but it, it's embarrassing. And, you know, it's embarrassing to have to, there's no way you can defend it. So, I mean, you know, we just have to kind of say, well, yeah, I mean, just kind of shrug our shoulders like everybody else and be like, I don't know. I don't know why that happened. Like, it was crazy. It's just kind of embarrassing <laughs> and shameful. Uh, I feel like you used to be able to travel and be like, yeah, I'm an American. And now it's, I'm American. Oh, how do you feel about Trump? And it's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> A little embarrassing. The way Americans at least used to have view America is it's supposed to be the leader of the free world and set the example for the things you're supposed to do and we include like people from all over the world and accept people from all over the world and now it's turned into like you, you see a lot more like white supremacism and like you know Trump didn't create any dis discrimination or hatred, but he definitely enabled it and brought it out. So it's, I've, I feel like I've seen more hatred in the past like four years. I think our image was already pretty well tarnished um, over the last four years. So um, I, don't, I don't necessarily think this one event knocks us down or, or makes me feel embarrassed to be an American because we've been pretty embarrassing for four years and I'm more more than anything it just makes me concerned um, I used to think you know someday at some point I'll move back to America and it feels like the longer this goes on the more it's like can I move back to America would I want to move back to America is it gonna be a country that I recognize as the one that I left in 2005 you know um, so that's more how I feel, just concerned for the future. Out of your, I guess, some of your Japanese friends, what's their reaction towards this incident if, if you talk to them about it? Just that it's crazy. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it, that, that they can't believe it. But I, I think they do a good job of, um, you know, the Americans that come here, yeah. they ingratiate themselves in the culture a little bit more. So I think they look at it as a country and not really the people. Like maybe it's a government problem, right? Uh, so do you think the Japanese perception towards like, people in the U.S. or American or America as a country has changed? I definitely think they're going to look at America as unstable. I mean, I think before they always thought America was dangerous, but I think in the recent, you know, th this year especially, uh, I think Japanese people, whenever I say, oh, I'm, I want to go back to the yeah. States, I want to go back home, they always tell me, why would you want to do that? America is dangerous. America has a crazy president. It's not safe for you. You know, I mean, it, it just makes me sad that they would think that my, you know, great country is such a dangerous place to live when, you know, I lived there most of my life, 25 years, and never had any problems. How have you been responding to the their, their reaction, I guess. Well, so this is kind of what I tell people. I think that what has happened, and I, I think this probably happens in a lot of countries, is that America has sold so long their slogan of, of the American dream, so that if you work really hard, and if you're smart, um, you'll be successful. 
And to a lot of Americans, successful means rich. So I think what has happened is you've got this whole group of people who maybe they do work hard, but because of just maybe circumstances out of their control, or some are circumstances that they brought on themselves. You know, they, they don't have a great education, but they expect to have a job where they make a lot of money. I mean, or, you know, or they've overextended themselves. They've bought cars or houses that they couldn't afford. Now they've gotten in problems. And so I think there was this whole group of people that already felt a little bit dissatisfied with the state of their lives. And it's easier to blame another group of people than to look at yourself and think, well, my own actions have like led to the way my life is. And I think that's kind of what Trump sold was that immigrants or people who are on like social welfare, you know, programs are the people who've stolen the life you want from you. And I think unfortunately that just resonated with a lot of people and they, they jumped on that bandwagon. So that's kind of how I explain it. That's how I explain it to myself, and that's how I explain it to people here, too. Yeah. So many, many people like uh, on the internet or in the news, they are saying that Trump should be impeached for this. What are your thoughts on that? I definitely think it's a little bit too late. I think that uh, as a country, we need to move forward and kind of focus on um, fixing the problems and not trying to you know, focus on what's already leaving anyway, because he's done, it's over, he's washed up, um, you know, and he conceded, he finally gave the concession speech we were all waiting for, um, also far too late, but you know, it's time for us to move on as a country. Yes, I think if it was anybody else, <laughs> and this wouldn't even be a question, right? Like if it was like the previous president, Obama, he, he, he incited a group of Black Lives, My, Black Lives Matter protesters to do anything, then they would definitely be like impeach them immediately. So I, I think this is a no-brainer to be honest. Like if, if, it, if people were to look at it like that, then quite simply, you know, doing damage to a, you know one of the federal buildings and inciting people to do that. Think this would ever happen in Japan? Have you seen similar things in Japan? <laughs> I don't think it would ever happen in Japan. No, uh, it would have to be some pretty. There'd have to be some pretty serious things happening in Japan in order for something like that to happen because people don't really go that far off from the mainstream and their, within their culture. Like, not in that, that, those kind of numbers to where you could storm a Capitol building or something. And in addition to that, like, Japanese people are treated the same, like, across the board pretty much by their police. So, like, if, if people are protesting in that way, they wouldn't give them an exception and allow them to come in. Um, in the United States, it's very, very clear that some of the uh, Capitol Police were involved in you know, some of the things that are going on there. So I don't think that would happen here. Like today, I feel like it wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, I don't know, the culture is just different in that, you know, the the kind of like anger, growing anger and uh, that it would take. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's different. Like even with Black Lives, uh, the Black Lives Matter march that happened in June here, like it was 3,500 people, but everyone was still very, you know, organized, respectful. We were loud, definitely. But, you know, it was, and we were angry, but it wasn't uh, at all chaotic because, because, and I, and I think it's not chaotic because the issues here are different. You know, no one's here dying at the hands of police. No one's here dying in the streets. Um, uh, and like I said, the Capitol riots, I think part of it was a response to BLM and the belief that like, I, like if they can do it, we can too. But it's, it's, not, it's not the same. And the issues here, even though we face discrimination here as well, it's a different type, it's a different form. So we can go about it in a different way. I think Americans are way more uh, you know, they have a rebellious shriek in them, you know? I mean, that's part of the reason why the country was founded in the first place, mm -hmm. was uh, obviously taxation without representation. So I think part of the value in being American is kind of fighting for what you believe in. And even if that means to go to extreme measures, some people are going to be willing to take it. Whereas here, I don't think that, you know, they're willing to risk as much just because of, you know, so society. In Asia, there is the collective mindset, right? Whereas in the Western uh, Western countries, there's the individualistic mindset. So in America, everyone's always thinking about themselves. They're not really thinking about the greater good. They're thinking about, I want my voice heard. I want to do this. But in Japan, it's about what's the best for everybody. So if a group of protesters come out and they block the street because they want their voices heard, that would never happen because they know for their greater good, they're blocking the street of all these people and causing problems. So in Japanese society, they're they're very focused on what's the best for all and not just for the sum. The censorship environment is a little bit different in Japan but what are your thoughts around the fact that Trump was banned from um, Twitter and Facebook so 
I am I am of the very firm opinion that a private company gets to decide to refuse service to somebody. The same way you can't go into a restaurant without shoes on, you can't go onto a platform spouting hateful uh, rhetoric that is uh, seditious. <laughs> like, I think he has other platforms. I'm, I'm frustrated and confused by people who talk about free speech <laughs> because he's the president. He can walk into the press room at any time he chooses. He can call up NBC News for all he cares. He, he has many ways to share his feelings and a private company like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, they reserve the right to refuse service. I'm conflicted because mm -hmm. on one hand, these are private companies. Um, however, they are essentially public platforms as well. There's a conflict in me where I think that because these have essentially become public platforms, uh, like there are free speech questions involved. If it, it was something different, like uh, public, like public radio or something, then that'd be yeah. a much different story. Where it's public, so you cannot be completely, you cannot be completely banned from that. Well, so I'm not surprised that you know they would actually you know ban him, even if it is just temporarily or permanently, uh, until the the whole situation can calm down. Because one wrong tweeter, uh, Twitter from you know Trump, and it, it could spell even more violence. I mean, they they took guns and and bombs and all sorts of things from those protesters. So what could have happened? It could have been much worse. I see both sides of it, honestly, and I and I see that like he you know he broke their community standards many many times and so you know the fact that they did it so quickly now is more so related to the current events than the actual action that he continued doing because he'd, he'd already been breaking their community standards but they gave him an exception so i think uh it's justified but at the same time them all of the com you know all the companies doing this to, to right-wing you know media and whitening like parlor the parlor app it's extreme. <laughs> it is extreme. I've never seen anything like that yeah, ever. And that, it, it's, it's a little dystopian, to, to be honest. But. So having lived in the US and Japan right now, like, um, do you have a country that you prefer living in and why? I've only lived in like Florida and here. Um, I like being here, but I, I think I'll probably end up back in America just because it's a little bit hard to exit uh, teaching English in Japan. Like I'm, I'm trying to learn Japanese, but it's it's hard, and who knows if I'll get to the level in the next few years where you can actually work. Which like I don't blame it. It's the same in America. You should learn English to get a good job. But uh. emotionally speaking, I would love to live in the U.S. again someday because my family is there and I'm very close to them, and I wish. You know, I wish I could see a point where I would feel comfortable going back to the U.S. Oh, and I forgot a really big thing, health insurance. I am insured here. I can get sick or be hospitalized or have surgery and it's not going to break my bank. Uh, I like living in Japan, honestly, for the safety and the convenience. Um, you know, not to say Japan has no crime, everywhere has crime, but you know, I can walk around, you know, pretty late in the evening and not be afraid. Um, you know, I if I accidentally leave my purse somewhere, I can come back and it's still there or someone's turned it in. Like that's nice. That's a that's a nice feeling. So, I guess as an American living in Japan, if you have to send like a message or say something to friends back home, what would that be? Be safe. <laughs> stay inside. <laughs> Um, and uh, if you see large groups of people holding strange signs, don't go near them. <laughs> Probably not a good idea right now. <laughs> I mean, I would tell them, you know, like Japan is a great place. Come anytime. Um, you know, you guys would definitely love it. The food is great. Uh, it's a very safe country. Uh, the people are friendly. The service is outstanding. Um, and you'll get to learn all sorts of new things. Oh gosh, <laughs> just to try to behave <laughs> and be nice to each other. You know, and remember that at the end of the day, like, presidents come and go, but it's not worth falling out with your friends and family and neighbors over it. Because um, that person doesn't care about you. They don't know your name. You know what I mean? And so you don't want to sever personal relationships over something like politics.